Yeah, I think we should be fine. Okay, we're okay. If, if I could have your attention, we're going to go ahead and get started. Yeah, we'll come to the podium, yes. Good afternoon, I'm William Ligon, and we will go ahead and get started with our, yeah, come up here, mm -hmm. right there. With our hearing, we're going to hear um, in order, in this order, the, from the Court of Appeals, the Public Defender Council, the Judicial Council, the Supreme Court, the Prosecuting Attorneys Council, and the Council of Superior Court Judges. Um, so, all right. Okay, you have the floor. All right, good afternoon. I'm Sarah Doyle. I'm the Chief Judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. We have a very simple fiscal year supplemental request. Um, it relates only to $17,441 dealing with some security, some security equipment that is in a, I guess, non-public area in our building that um, the GBA used to maintain and they are no longer going to be maintaining that. And so this is the cost for us to take over maintaining it, as well as to add a couple, few more cameras in our, the area where our new judges um, are situated in the health building, correct? And this is uh, 30, uh, let's see, 14.1, I think, on your sheet. We would have had nothing in our, in our supplemental, except for this was something that came up sort of out of the blue from us. My understanding is that uh, if we want to keep maintaining it, we have to pay for it. So that's it. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. And I'll tell you about one other thing that's out there. It's not in our request, but we are um, have uh, since about September been being billed for WAN charges. I don't know if you've heard of this situation, but we are in the wireless access network. Basically, um, when they installed it, the Court of Appeals was not one of the entities that was required to pay for access to the WAN charges. It was split up among, I believe, 13 different agencies. We were not one of them. Back in September, after our request, our supplemental request was put in, we, got, we began being billed approximately $4,000 a month for this charge. Um, we have successfully been able to um, appeal those charges and get them credited through January of this year, but my understanding is is that we are going to be billed from February on uh, going forward this $4,000. I also understand that because of that, it's going to be spread out among more agencies. Somebody else should be paying less, so it shouldn't be an increase, you know, there should be money somewhere coming out of another budget that might be able to be put in ours. Um, but because we weren't aware of it, it wasn't in our supplemental, and it is something that's sort of out there. Um, we were hoping that maybe we could continue to avoid getting those charges, um, getting them credited through this year, and then possibly you know, put it in next year at some point in time if, if we're unsuccessful. Yes. Is that correct, Jan? Going forward. Going forward, yes. So, we're so. Forward, we will be billed for the rest of the year and on. So that's it. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. Uh, Brian Tyson, Executive Director of the Public Defender Council for the state. I'm joined by our Budget Director, Terry Rayford, our Deputy Director, Jiminique Rogers, and our External Affairs Director, Cheryl Karunas. Um, I know we have a couple of items in the amended to talk about, but I thought with your permission, it might be good just to kind of recap briefly the purpose of our agency within state government and what we're about. Um, Sir Winston Churchill is the one who said, the farther back you look, the farther forward you're likely to be able to see. And uh, if you'll indulge me, there's a, a historical event that I think describes the purpose and the role of the Public Defender Council for the state that might be useful. Um, in January of 1961, uh, President John F. Kennedy had actually just been sworn in as the new president of the United States. And he received a plan from his predecessor that was codenamed Operation Bumpy Road at the time. Um, it had been vetted out by a bunch of very intelligent people, very smart people who'd looked at this and concluded, you know what, this is a good plan for an invading force. 
Uh, President Kennedy had a very robust group of people around him. They looked very carefully at the plan. Everyone decided this was a great idea. And eventually the president authorized the operation. And so in April of 1961, the invading force began moving towards the Bay of Pigs in Cuba. And we now know this as one of the biggest uh, failures of the United States over the years to try to deal with the Castro regime in, regime in Cuba. But it leads to an interesting question of why there was such a failing by individuals to see obvious plans and problems with this. And I'd submit to you that the reason for that is the failure to use a common effort in military planning, which is a red team challenge. Uh, when there's a military plan that's being put together, there, is a, there are two teams created, the blue team, which represents US forces, and the red team that's designed to attack and look for the weaknesses within the plan of the blue team. And the theory is that if you can have somebody test the assumptions, test the theories of the blue team before you ever go to war, you'll be sure that you have a better plan when that time comes. And so I would submit to you that for us in government and the justice system, public defenders are the red team of the criminal justice system. We exist to test the state's theory, to see if it's correct, see if there's shortcomings in it, and if, the ultimate, if it ultimately proves that the blue team is correct, then we can all have confidence in the outcome of the justice system. But we exist for that purpose to test the assumptions and test well, what's happening in the state along the way. So for us as the Public Defender Council to be able to do that job, um, we obviously have our state funds, and I've given you the handout here that has a, a brief history of the agency. We were put together um, over time as kind of a patchwork of state funds, as you can see on the left there. Um, there was not been necessarily a whole lot of thought into the design of the agency, and we're in the process of moving towards a much more coherent and thoughtful approach to how we handle things, both in trial court representation, appeals, and then our specialized um, appellate representation and capital along the way. And so as part of that goal, one of our biggest priorities is moving from the use of other sources of revenue to state funds. We've run the agency for years on three different sources of revenue. Uh, state funds, which obviously is the biggest portion of what we do. Um, we have an administrative fee that we collect from the counties for uh, handling the HR expenses. And then we've also been using governor's emergency funds for a number of years to kind of keep the agency afloat as we had unforeseen expenses. So in our amended budget request, um, you'll see obviously the biggest item is the $3 million request in the uh, public, defender, uh, public defenders program that address, it's listed as conflicts. What it is is truing up our budget base. Um, over the years, we had rolled those emergency funds forward for a number of years and had never been able to get the right number as far as the state funds amount. Last year, we put in the amended budget $3 million to make sure that was the right number and test that last data point. And then for this year, um, we left it out of the general last year to make sure that we had the right number. We've now put it back in the amended and the general this year. So that's obviously our biggest budget request in the amended. That will get us completely off of the use of governor's emergency funds going forward, and we'll be left with just state funds and administrative fee revenue. Um, on the administrative fee revenue piece, um, the training funds that the House provided, the additional $200,000 for training and expenses, that's money that's part of our statutory mission that's currently paid for out of administrative fee revenue, and that'll be a step towards allowing us to move that statutory responsibility over to state funds as well. And then uh, you can see there the uh, purchasing of computer equipment and vehicles. As an agency, when we first were stood up about 12 years ago, we purchased a lot of infrastructure at the time, but then due to the downturn in the economy, there was not much changeover in that infrastructure along the way. And so we have a lot of very old vehicles, the ones that are still running, and then uh, very high mileage expenses because we've had to surplus a lot of vehicles and then had to have people pay mileage. That'll help us as a cost savings measure there. And then for the IT equipment, being able to replace some of those computers, some of which are as, as old as 12 years old and we're still kind of piecing them together to make them work. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, our statutory responsibility requires us to train our lawyers, and we've never received state funds for that purpose, so we've just kind of used money wherever we could find it to put that together. Um, it gives us both a quality assurance piece that we can have people well-trained and able to do the job, uh, but also really it's a part of getting us onto state funds for what is our statutory responsibility and stopping using alternative revenue sources for those statutory missions that we have. Yes, sir, it was. The, the Office of Planning and Budget has directed us that the 
Administrative fee is supposed to be used as our conflict cushion. Um, we'll have situations sometimes where you'll have an increase in gang activity. Macon um, and Coweta Circuit this year have had a real increase in gang activity. A lot of times those are one-time spikes and we'll see an increased conflict spending as a result of that. We don't want to appropriate state funds for that because it's a one-time occurrence that was not going to come back around necessarily. So our goal is to get to administrative fee revenue being that cushion exclusively for conflict cases. Yes, sir. That's correct. And if, and if we don't need them in a particular year, if we don't have one of those spikes in a particular circuit, then we'll be able to, be able to surplus that back to the state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. No problem. Good afternoon. I'm Cynthia Clanton, and it's a pleasure to serve as the Judicial Council's Director of the Administrative Office of the Courts. So I know Chairman is new on this uh, in his role, and I thought it would be a good time to reintroduce our agency to you. Judicial Council is a policy-making body of 27 members drawn from the leadership of every level of court. The Judicial Council sets policies and procedures that affect or require the participation of the entire judicial branch. Judicial Council Chair is always the Chief Justice, and the co-chair is the Presiding Justice of the Supreme Court, who is Harold Melton. As the name administrative implies, the Administrative Office of the Courts is a shared resource providing services to the entire judicial branch. Those services are different for every group we serve, depending on their specific needs and staffing. Services we provide include payroll, HR, vendor contract support, including technology contracts, communications and budget. We have a fully operational IT staff that collaborates in statewide projects, such as the child support e-filing system used by 80% of the courts in the Division of Child Support Services cases. One of our core functions is to provide judicial workload assessments by using case counts and time and motion studies, which often results and request to you for funding for new judgeships. I suspect that most of you are in the business of providing services to clients and constituents. In a similar fashion with resources you provide, the AOC is a client-centered entity. Our work is directed by statute, judicial council action, and its strategic plan, and by order of the Supreme Court. Our clients are Georgia's judges. Just as you strive, Chairman, to serve your clients and keep your constituents happy, I promise you, we strive to keep the Georgia judges happy too. Happy judges make for a good week. Our latest annual report that I believe you received has lots of details about our work, and I think you got a handout on our sub-programs and budget units. So once again, the AOC is a service agency to the entire judiciary. We serve 1,400 judges. The staff and I look forward to working with you. I think you've already met our budget officer, Ashley Garner, and with me is the presiding justice, Harold Melton, who, along with his many hats, is the chair of our budget committee. So it's my pleasure to turn the mic over to Justice Melton for his presentation on our budget. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Clanton, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it is a pleasure to announce to you as members of this committee that our supplemental budget requests actually ask for your approval for reductions. Uh, the first reduction that you'll see reflected in line 18.1 is a result of the two initial judges that were added to the Supreme Court. The General Assembly had appropriated rent money beginning in January 1 for some space that had been previously occupied by AOC. And so since we had rent being paid for two different entities for the same space, with the Supreme Court taking over that space, the money that the AOC had been allocated for that money is being sent back to the state. So that's the first reduction in the amount of $22,879. And then the second reduction is uh, in the amount of $20,000 under the budget for Judicial Qualifications Commission. That's a result of the uh, resignation of the, uh, of the executive director freeing up some money. Uh, and I'm also glad to announce that we have the uh, new incoming executive director present, Mr. Easterlin. Would you mind raising your hand? Glad to see him here. I'd like for you to get to know him. We're excited about his his leadership in that new area. But that changeover has freed up some, from re some revenues that we're able to return back to the state in the amount of $20,000, and that's our supplemental request. Well, we're excited, glad you are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. I'm Burt Poston. I'm the chairman of the Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia. Uh, with me is Mark Williams, our uh, CFO. Our request or our amended budget is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's only one item uh, requesting new funding other than some uh, merit system adjustments that are in there. Uh, that's line 24.1. It's an increase for the Tifton uh, Judicial Circuit Accountability Court Supplement. Uh, those supplements were created in uh, the 2015 session, and they've been uh, implemented during the um, amended year budgets as those accountability courts come online. Uh, and that court in uh, Tifton uh, was up and running prior to uh, January 1st of this year. Uh, it's the only new one in this budget cycle. Uh, and I believe there's only two circuits at this point that don't have accountability courts. So that amount there, just under $5,000, is the uh, six months of that supplement plus the uh, add-on charges. Um, I would also draw uh, your attention to some subtractions uh, that were made on the House side. Uh, those are amounts uh, that we gave to the House uh, based on uh, some delayed implementation of some items that were funded originally in the 17 budget, where some new assistant DAs were hired a little bit later in the year than originally intended, and so there's some lapsed funding there. Uh, we gave those amounts to the House, and we're fine with those uh, cuts staying in the amended budget. And I think that's the only changes in our amended 17 budget, if, unless you have any questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and uh, Senator Kennedy and Senator Stone. It's a pleasure to, to be here with you all today. 
and present uh, the talk about the amended fiscal year 17 budget. I apologize for my voice. It's just a time of year it gets a little weak. I'm pleased to have with me uh, my friend and colleague, presiding Justice Melton, a friend and colleague, uh, Justice uh, Mike. Everybody knows him, I think. I don't know if it's Justice Michael Boggs, and then our clerk, uh, Ms. T. Barnes, and our fiscal officer, Ms. Regina Jones. So it's a pleasure to have them. It's a pleasure to be here today and just briefly talk to you a little bit about the budget uh, for amended year 17. <clears throat> the items which we are uh, asking for, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and Senators, is we would like for an increase in our funds for personal services for one IT position, which is a systems analyst. Uh, we would like that. We now have two persons in this, and we would like to go to a third. Uh, the two people we have in this department truly are superstars, and they're basically already stretched, stretched to their maximum capacity. They do everything from desktop support to network monitoring for potential attacks on, and external threats, and this is a rather extensive scope. To give you gentlemen some background on the responsibilities of our IT department, they support up to 90 physical users and that includes interns, but this is done on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to that, they support almost 300 devices, which includes, inter these include scanners, printers, laptops, personal computers, and copiers. On the network side, they support upward of 20 servers and 14 switches. Now, with the funds that we had been awarded in fiscal year 15, we were able to purchase a new network but this will allow and does allow users, this network which we now have, allows its users to use it remotely from almost anywhere. And this has truly extended the operating hours of our IT staff to virtually being on call 24 hours a day. I also IT department handles the phone and email support for our electronic filing system. And I think the Supreme Court has been a leader in the electronic filing. We now have 4,000 registered e-filers and trial court clerks and staff from all 159 counties, so we have that. <clears throat> and what we're asking for is a salary of $72,621, which is the salary, and then we have fringes. But obviously, we're asking that to be prorated for the months of April, May, and June and that is the $29,578 figure. We're also asking uh, senators for an increase in funds for the personal services for, for obtaining a procurement and facilities position, which we would call a purchasing and facilities coordinator. And that would be the, to support the growth of our court. And we have uh, prorated that also over three months, the months of April, May, and June and that would be $30,594. We, uh, the responsibilities for this procurement person that it would handle would be to spread out among our employees in the IT and also in the fiscal and clerk's office specific duties that include purchasing of supplies, equipment or services necessary for the day-to-day -day operations, for vendor liaison, that would be, say, things like the GBA and also for procurement projects. And we're also asking at this time in the amended fiscal year 27 budget for an increase in funds for personal services for one senior accountant. As I said, our, our, our fiscal officer is Ms. Regina Jones here. Uh, this would help with the services which we have retained. We now have to have two new judges. You know, from 1945 to, 19, to the end of this past year, we had uh, seven, but we're delighted to have our nine justices now, and we thank you all uh, for that. But this senior accountant, <clears throat> and as I said, we currently have two state-funded positions here, would address all of the court's physical needs. It includes accounts payable, receivable, it includes payroll, and it includes human resources, budgets, 
financial reporting, a fiscal year end audit. And this request, as I said, is to add one additional person to the fiscal office so that we can ensure a continuity of the services that are provided. And it also is a necessary separation of duties as well and added internal controls. Specifically, this additional employee would perform advanced professional accounting duties such as record <coughs> monthly of fiscal activity and analyze and reconcile the accuracy of transactions in our general ledger and subsidiary modules. It would maintain in the state's TeamWorks financial system uh, the amount, the information that has to be maintained there. And it also would assist the director, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Uh, Regina Jones, in preparing our standard accounting reports in accordance with the uh, obviously generally accepted uh, uh, accounting principles. She would maintain or he would maintain budget and financial records and monitor compliance with fiscal policies and procedures and also provide technical assistance for all of our departments. Again, <clears throat> the request for that would be an amount of 80, uh, excuse me, of uh, $75,115 plus fringes, but we would prorate that obviously for the months of April, May, and June, and that would be for $30,594. $594. So I would tell you that is what we are, are asking for. We think we've been very careful in the past, and uh, we're really at a, at a point where we, we need some real help in these matters. Our personnel is, is exceptionally good and exceptionally fine, but they simply need that. I would also just simply like to tell you that we had, and it was correctly done, <coughs> the, uh, the House regarding amended uh, fiscal year uh, 2017, they reduced the funds for a, an administrative assistant by $29,824, and, and that was the correct reduction. And what that did was we had an administrative assistant who did not come on board until July. And so that was, and uh, we had that situation, so that was a proper reduction in funds. We did that. The House did one other thing, though. They actually reduced funds to reflect mileage that we have, and they reduced that by $28,000. We have talked to their budget uh, uh, officers, and it should have been reduced 14, and it was just simply a, a little slip there. And what happened was we had asked for 28,000 for the next year for the next year, and this was for a half year, so the reduction shouldn't have been. 28,000, it should have been 14,000. So that's what we've done. Well, I don't want to say the house messed up, but, but maybe take a look at that carefully if you would, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and if, I, if I, either of my distinguished colleagues, uh, Presiding Justice Melton or Justice Boggs, would like to say something, this would be an opportunity for them to address you. Thank you, Chief. I just want to point out one thing, and, and that's with those three personnel positions that we did ask for in the supplemental budget, the House zeroed those out. They kind of indicated that uh, it, they didn't prefer to add positions in the supplemental budget, and we understand that, but we do want to flag that in the big budget, it's really critical. And speaking to that, and Judge Justice Boggs might want to also, they did do that. They zeroed that out. Uh, there was one item that they did not take out, and truthfully, that was uh, the increase of the funds for the, paid to the Georgia Department of Public Safety for the trooper who, who protects the court and, and provides security to the court. Uh, that simply is a $8,784 that was approved. That's just a pass-through figure that comes from them, and we did that. We do want to, uh, un and we understand the situation with a amended fiscal year budget, but these, these positions are truly critical to us for, for the next big budget. We uh, please take a careful look at them. Uh, Justice Boggs, Madam Clerk, I mean, thank you all for your time, and we do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.
Good afternoon. I'm Horace Johnson, president of the Council of Superior Court Judges. I bring you greetings from Walton County and uh, a crazy docket morning I've had, but I'm glad I, my timing worked well to get in the door before you called my name. Uh, so in any event, thank you for uh, hearing from us today as well. Um, we have uh, a few items that are listed on this request as it relates to uh, some adjustments that are to be made with regard to the first item being the um, some accountability court uh, supplement adjustments that needed to be made. I think we are in sync and have gotten all of those kinks in place and, and things that have been done to be able to help to uh, get those adjustments done. There will be only two circuits, once this is done, left in the state that do not have an accountability court within their circuit boundaries. Um, we're down to 47 to 49, as I'm correct still. So these will help with regard to those two, that, these that are just coming on in, into places as well. And so this adjustment is being requested for that purpose for doing so. Should I just continue until you stop me? Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you. The um, next request has to do with an adjustment relative to the, uh, the new uh, judgeship in the Western Circuit um, with regard to um, the funding for that particular seat which has been uh, sworn in and, and the uh, judges serving. And that 50, 50 uh, that 7,000, I'll give a $7,500 adjustment as it relates to that. Uh, the, the next item has to do with an adjustment in the uh, merit system assessments. Uh, again, with regard to uh, the change in the assessments that are built uh, for uh, that particular entity as well. And the last item listed has to deal with uh, adjustment for two law clerk delayed hiring. And this is an adjustment with regard to make that work based upon when they're hiring and the position was actually filled on August 22nd, 2016. Um, so I guess I'd call it a book adjustment, if you would, as it relates to that. Um, I think that I hit all of those notes as it relates to the FYI amended uh, 17 budget. Questions and happy to try to answer anything that I can. No, sir. I think uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Well, unless there's anything else, we will uh, stand adjourned. Thank you. Hey, um, I will circulate a report and get y'all. positions I've heard some some talk. Have you ever thought of consolidating with the court of appeals and like the IT and the IT yeah and would there be any savings that would be found if we did that? Right. Yeah no I mean you'd have to 